Well, we've grown accustomed to Clive Palmer's brash business style and bold ventures over the years, but the latest move might be the most audacious yet. The mining magnate has declared he wants to be Prime Minister and has established a new party with a plan to field candidates in every seat come September. Mr Palmer joins us now live from the Gold Coast. Good morning, Mr Palmer. Thank you for your time this morning. Good morning, Kath. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, you've got a pretty big task ahead of you. You first of all need to, to get 500, 500 members to get your party up. How are you going with that? Well, first of all, Kath, if it's OK, I'd like to just issue a quick apology. I'd just like to apologise to all those people that have gone to unitedaustralia.org and tried to log on to join the party because they've blown up the website. That's how we're going. That's how popular uh, it is. Is that so? <laughs> That's so, and, I, and of course, the, I can now say if they go to unitedaustralia.org and, and re-click on, they can join as members. It's all up and running now. Do you, how many do you have so far? Well, we don't publish our party membership numbers, either do the Labor Party or the, um, the Liberal Party. But they'll be, uh, we'll be applying to the AEC next week, and uh, we've got sufficient number of people to do that, and that's the most important thing. M Mr Palmer, 150 lower house candidates, um, candidates in for all the Senate spots, that's a huge task trying to find those people. What sort of process are you going to have in place for vetting? Because, you know, there's a pretty good chance that if you throw open the doors to that many people, you're going to end up with some nutters, aren't you? Well, of course, you know, I was criticised very heavily in the media all oh, about nine, eight, ten months ago when they said uh, that I was all bluff and I wasn't, didn't want to stand uh, for federal parliament and it all went away. But we've been working diligently every day, every night since that time to vet candidates to get the right people and prominence in this country. Leaders of their own industry who are fed up with the fact that they know Tony Abbott and Julia Gillard are tarred with the same brush. They're all controlled by lobbyists and if you go to lobbying firms you'll find there's one former ALP minister, one former Liberal minister. Now I'm the former official spokesman of the National Party as, as media director. I'm a former life member of the Liberal Party. I know what happens and I'm a prominent businessman in Australia. And if I pay a lobbyist a million dollars and I want a result, he'll get it for me. It doesn't matter who's in government. And that's not good for this country. We need to change things. Mr Palmer, we've got about 150 days to the election. How are you going to pay for this audacious campaign to have lower house and senate candidates elected to the parliament? So how are we going to pay for it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, how are you going to bankroll this particular venture? Well, I think there's a lot of people who are supporting the party um, right across the country and uh, supporting it financially. There's been major commitments made over the weekend from other people besides myself. And uh, I don't think that bankrolling it will be any problem at all. And in the coming dates ahead, which are all planned, you'll see prominent members of parliament, you'll see prominent Australians come out to support the United Australia Party because they think it's too important. I mean, if you're happy, you know, <laughs> if you're happy and satisfied with all that's being done now, you can vote again for Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott. But if you think this country can move further, should do faster and release some of its wealth to its citizens, Everyone tells us we're in a great economy. Australia's an example, like the Assistant Treasurer said. Ask the average man in the street, his life gets worse. And why is it that we have the highest rate of infant mortality in the world? We've had so for 100 years with our Aboriginal population, and the Prime Minister's done nothing. They don't care about the people. They only care about being re-elected for their own selfish gain, that's all. As you mentioned before, you've been uh, a member of the LNP. You've been on the executive of the LNP. You're still very close friends with Bruce McIver, who's the LNP president. Uh, does he still work with you? Do you work with uh, Bruce McIver? Well, he's, he's got a professional role in our shipping company, but we don't uh, talk about politics that much these days. But you isn't know, that a conflict a of interest? Isn't that a conflict of interest? He's president of the LNP. You're standing candidates against the LNP. You've had a, uh, obviously a, uh, a big falling out with senior members of the LNP. Bruce McIver and you both work together. Well, we've just seen Anzac Day passed and we've honoured the people that have gone overseas that fought for this country as Australians. And we respect them. They didn't go overseas to fight for the Liberal Party or to fight for, as ALP. They went as Australians. Altogether, my point of view is there's too much criticism about whether you're on one side or the other. We need a party that will unite all Australians for what's best in the community. Bruce McIver is welcome to join. You're welcome to join. Just because you have a political view different from mine is not a reason why I should hate you or not a reason why I should want your children not to have a better life in the future. Well, Clive, in this the... politics of division should stop. Well, Clive, in the last state election, the Labor Party uh, were very fond of saying that, uh, that the LNP was a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Clive Palmer. 
won't the new UAP be a wholly owned subsidiary of, of uh, Clive Palmer? And isn't it, in a real sense, a political sense, a feather in Premier Newman's cap that he wouldn't be dictated to by someone who had been so generous to his party? Well, that's not, not true. I mean, it wasn't a wholly owned subsidiary of Clive Palmer. That was very clear. I wouldn't have resigned. I had a clash with them. I stood up because I saw 15,000 families being thrown out of jobs. I had a situation where public servants were committing suicide that had been there for 50 years. Uh, 50, uh, sorry, 15 or 20 years or more. And I was worried about them and their families. Regardless of who my friends were, regardless of that, I thought they, they, their lives mattered more. So good on Bruce, uh, Campbell Newman, you know. But uh, you'll find that most Australians support what I'm saying. And if you have a look at the polls that will be done the weekend, you'll realise that we've got sufficient amount of support in the community to, to, to win the day. I mean, the, the nine MSN poll, 60,000 people were involved in it, and we received 30% first preferences. And that's despite the fact that you would have had Labor apparatchiks and Liberal apparatchiks on the phone, also on the clicker all day, trying to push our vote down. Because we're, we're, it's not for me, it's for you, it's for your citizens, it's for everybody else in our future. You can't have people that have never run a tuck shop run a $1.5 trillion economy. And all this policy discussion is a waste of time. I've been there, I know how it works. No one listens to what they say on the press. They're only worried about their perception. I'm worried about reality. We need to take a break right now, but there's plenty more to talk about with Mr Palmer and what his party stands for, his politics, in detail next. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Meet the Press, where we're speaking to Clive Palmer, who is live with us from the Gold Coast. Mr Palmer, we'd like to get an idea of what policies uh, your party will stand for. So we're going to throw a few ideas your, your way. Gay marriage, where would your party stand on that? Well, all social issues are, are going to be uh, issues of conscience, and uh, there's a whole range of the normal social issues that go in that. And because I'm the federal leader of the United Australia Party, I don't want to influence anybody on the issue and comment on that. Uh, that's, that's our policy. Everyone has a free vote. Well, we know both Tony Abbott and Julie Gillard are against gay marriage. Uh, why can't we hear your view? Because it's not something you can make a blanket uh, statement until you see the legislation and do it in a responsible manner. And I don't want to I influence people. I've told you our policy is that all members of parliament should have a free vote in the issue. It shouldn't be a party policy issue. Um, That's our policy. Mr Palmer, at the moment the health minister is considering whether to put the abortion drug RU486 on um, the pharmaceutical benefits scheme. That is something that doesn't require a conscience vote. That's just a, um, you know, administrative decision. Where do you stand on that? Well, in our, our party, it would require a vote. It would require a vote in the party room of what people thought. You know, the, if the minister was going to do something that was controversial, like that which touched across social issues, our, our party constitution requires that everyone's consulted. Mr Palmer, one of the uh, most sensitive uh, and volatile issues in the electorate is the issue of asylum seekers, uh, people coming to Australia uh, in, in often very uh, badly conditioned uh, vessels. Uh, you in the past have suggested it would actually be cheaper, cheaper to actually fly people to Australia. Is that a policy that we're likely to see formalised before the next election? Well, it's one of our main, main policies is the fact that there's over $5 billion or more of Australian budget being spent uh, blockading Australia. And uh, if we get, look at it, if you're a family in Indonesia, whether you've got a legitimate claim or a, a false claim, and you want to come to Australia and you want to spend 2500 doing that, bringing your family on the plane, um, you can't do that. Uh, Julia Gillard won't let your family board the plane without a visa. So you're forced in the hands of uh, people smugglers to pay $20,000 each to go on a leaky boat to battle our Navy. Now, every other country in the world has a policy to let people get on the plane without a visa. If, they, if they're catching the plane, they're coming to either Sydney or Melbourne airports. You can have the facilities there to meet them rather than chase them all over the Indian Ocean. And as soon as they get off the plane, you can have them assessed. And if uh, it's a legitimate refugee claim, they can be dealt with then and appropriately and the families can be kept together. If they're uh, a queue jumper or someone that doesn't have any legal entitlement to come here, they should go back on the very next plane. And if the law needs to be changed to do that, we'd do it. Well, Mr Palmer, just a bit it of... It will save us a lot of money. Just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, apparently there is another group who wants to register the name Uniting Australia Party. Have you got a fallback if you can't register the United Australia Party? Another name? Well, this is, an, uh, this is another method that I used to use when we had competition. When I was the party director and spokesman for the, for the National Party, 
to, to have all these bogus parties or committees to confuse the media. It's a very good tactic. And they've probably taken it out of one of the books that I've written for them. But actually, we hold the, um, the business name for the United Australia Party. You know something? We also hold the business name for the name they're trying to register, Unifying Australia. Yes, but so then, we well, hold what about with those. the AEC? We, we, hold on, hold on. A, yeah. uh, no, just hold on. We also hold the, pay, uh, the trademark priority pa trademark applications for both names, and you'll find that you know we, we will in the coming weeks, no doubt, have members of parliament joining us, and we'll be a, a registered party here in Queensland. So these people have no claim whatsoever to that okay. name. Well, and, other... and, and this is just a tactic, you know. We, when they set up the AHC, they did it in such a way to make it difficult for people to stand for federal parliament. I, I have to advising them on that situation. I know why it's been set up okay. for, and, do, and just, we'll tell the people of Australia about that. Just do you quickly, think 23 does... million Australians lost the right to stand for prime minister because of uh, some act that's been passed by Tony Habbitt's? OK, just quickly, do, does your party have a view on where it'll direct its preferences? I notice Bob Catter is looking to um, you know, have a fairly close relationship with you. I, I guess he was also looking for some donations. I guess that's dried up for the Catter Australia Party. But uh, where will your preferences be going? Will they be going his way, the Liberals' way, Labor's way, no way? Well, our preferences will be going where our executive decides to send them. And, and the Liberal Party and the ALP have not made those decisions, nor have they published them. They're still waiting to... They normally make those decisions, as all the major parties do, when the um, nominations have closed and they can see who the candidates are. Mr. It will be much the same. Mr Palmer, you've said twice uh, on this program that uh, members of Parliament will be joining your party. Can you uh, clarify that? Are you saying that there's current sitting state federal MPs who have told you they will join the United Australia Party? Well, I don't want to make all the news on one day everywhere, <laughs> but there'll be, there'll be certainly announcements made so you fellas can keep busy. And uh, you Thank won't you have very to beat up the stories, you can have real ones. <laughs> <laughs> we'll you. keep a very keen eye on that, Mr Palmer. Thank you very much for your time this morning. It's, it's a pleasure. <laughs> God bless Australia. See you later. <laughs> See you later. Coming up on Meet the Press, are overseas investors pushing up property prices? Stay with us.